opening the book of Psalms, book 5, is the uh, title of our message taken from uh, Psalm 107 to 150, which we have read. The book of Psalms, 150 Psalms, consists of five smaller books. Psalm 1 to 42, 43 to 72, 73 to 89, 90 to 106, and finally, 107 to 150. As we open the Psalms, you would realize a careful study reveals the unfolding history of Israel predominantly during the reign of King David, the sweet psalmist of Israel. 2 Samuel 23 and verse 1 recorded, where worship is established in Israel. You remember when Israel was in the wilderness, the Lord gave to Moses the blueprint for the building of the tabernacle, it was Spartan, as it were, in the wilderness. But when they were entered into the promised land, and when their enemies were subdued all around them, and they had peace, and they were able to establish worship in Israel, that is where the Psalms were written, written to help us to see the journey leading to the establishment of the United Kingdom of Israel. And reference was made to Moses as the writer in Psalm 90. You recall last Lord's Day in the beginning of Book 4 to be the writer, in which is depicted Israel's backsliding leading to God's chastisement in the wilderness. Psalm 106, verse 6 to 29. And in the dispersal from the promised land, Psalm 106, verse 34 to 47. You see that when the people of God stay close to Him, worship Him, they are strengthened in the faith. But when they depart from Him, their life became very miserable. And the Psalms show us how the people of God can worship the Lord and find strength in Him for daily life. And the Psalms also show to us there is always a way back for His people to God. If they would only pick themselves up by the grace of God, the Lord always provides a way back for His people. And this is the development of the book of Psalms for the psalmist David and his writing points us to the greater David, Israel's Messiah, the Christ that would come to reign upon earth, or that reigns as king upon earth. Psalm 2, Psalm 97. And we saw how uh, in our study, in the first book, that it was recorded for us. The many passages that points us to the consummation of all of the revelation of God in the person of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And you would be able to see as you study all the 150 Psalms that it shows sniplets of the life of Christ, of His betrayal, of His accusations, of His crucifixion, of His death, of His resurrection of His ascension and of His return to judge the world 
Psalm 96 verse 13 says, Before the Lord, for He cometh, for He cometh to judge the earth, He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with His truth. Dear friends, just last week, we were studying Noah's flood in our 7 a.m. service and how we were told that the 7 a.m. that the flood points us to a greater judgment to come, the first judgment by water and the greater judgment by fire that is to come. Our Lord Jesus Christ is coming back and this earth will become a fiery furnace in due time. This earth is not our home. We have a permanent home, not here, but in the heavens. And the psalmist gives to us the picture showing us that we are a people of God, that we are a people on our journey, on our pilgrimage to our heavenly home. And David, the psalmist, provides for us the insight the insight of life with God. How blessed it is for a man to walk with God. And through the Psalms, you would be able to see uh, those description of his time as a fugitive, to his reign as Israel's king, and to the covenant that the Lord would make with him to preserve an earthly kingdom which ultimately points to Christ's reign in the millennial kingdom on earth. As we see Israel in the land today, how the Lord brought them back to the land after they were scattered for 2,000 years, we see the reality of the fulfillment of the promises of God that it will not be nullified. In fact, the greater David, our Lord Jesus Christ, will return soon to establish his kingdom upon earth. This was the promise that was given in 2 Samuel 7 verse 16. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. As you read through the Psalms, you would see a transition of the five books beginning in book 1 from Psalm 1 to Psalm 41. The days leading to the reign of David in Israel. And in book 2, you would see Psalm 42 to 72 in the establishment of worship in Israel, concluding with the Psalm for Solomon by David in Psalm 72. So as you read through, which we are going through now, the book of, we have completed the book of First and Second Samuel, and this week we are reading the book of First and Second Kings, you would be able to see the development of Israel's history. How important for the people of God to stay close to God. And the Psalms provide for us the inner workings of a man's communion with God. How do we interact with God? How do we fellowship with God? God is spiritual. We cannot see Him. How do we interact with Him? How do we fellowship with Him? You would see in the Psalms, the psalmist describes for us his communion with God how he speaks to God, how he prays to God, how he talks to God, and how the Lord responds to him, to his prayer. And you would be able to hear and understand the mind of God as you consider the, 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 the various uh, uh, challenges of the human heart that you face daily. As you read the Psalms, you will be able to find answers to every emotional ailment, emotional 
cry or every every cry of the human heart, the needs of the human heart is recorded for us there in the Psalms. And in book 3, you would see from Psalm 73 to 89, worship in Israel, how it flourishes with the Lord confirming His covenant with David. Although there were signs of backsliding of the nations that, are, that is highlighted. At the end of the third book, you would see a departure of Israel from the Lord. It's recorded in Psalm 89. It's said here that my covenant will I not break, the Lord says to his people, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that will I not lie unto David, but thou hast cast off and abhorred, thou hast been wroth with thine anointed, thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant, thou hast profaned his crown by crust, casting it to the ground, thou hast broken down all his hedges, and thou hast brought his strong holes to ruin. Israel, after the reign of David in the reign of Solomon began to deteriorate in their spiritual life as a nation. Solomon married many foreign wives and these intermarriages brought in foreign women that brought foreign idols into Israel leading to the Israel's fall and their compromise in the faith and the dividing of the kingdom into the southern kingdom with two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, led by Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, and the northern ten tribes, led by Jeroboam, a defector during Solomon's reign. You would be able to see how that Moving away from God uh, is so detrimental to the spiritual life of God's people. But as you read the Psalms, you would be able to see how the Lord uh, inspires His people to come to Him, to meet with Him, to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy as we commune with God, as we worship Him, Oh, you see that the people of God flourishes in their spiritual life. God fights the battles of His people. You remember when Israel were confronted with enemies and the enemy was so powerful and they were so frightened by them. And what was their response when the enemy came? Well, they could do nothing because the enemy was just too powerful all they could do was to go down on their knees, humble themselves before God, and worship God, and bring their petitions and burdens to the Lord. And how the Lord instructed them that the enemy would be confounded, and they were instructed that they were to stand and they would to go forth with their instruments of praise and the Lord will do the rest to confound the enemy. And indeed, you see the Moabites, you see the Ammonites, you see those who came to destroy Israel fighting one another until there was not one soldier left. Israel did not have to do anything. It proved, dear friends, that if you have the Lord with you, he is your greatest comfort. He is your greatest strength. And as you glean through the books, you would be able to see that David would be the predominant writer throughout all the five books. In fact, you would see a description of David as the author of the Psalms 
in many of the descriptions in the five books which we have recorded for you in our notes in page one of our weekly on the second column at the top. But what we would like to highlight here is that there are other writers, there are other writers. As you uh, read, you would see that at the close or the big, uh, the close of book one in Psalm 42, the sons of Korah appear. And the sons of Korah would write just one psalm in the first book. But as you open the second book, the sons of Korah would be writing many more psalms, Psalm 44 to 49, 84 to 85, and Psalm 87. And then at the close of the second book, you would see Asaph was the author. He was the author of only one psalm. It was not right at the end, but it was right in the middle in Psalm 50 in book 2. And then you would see Asaph being highlighted in book 3, that he would write a numerous number of psalms from 73 to 83 in book 3. And then, as you close book 3, you would see uh, the person Ethan that was given as the author of only one psalm in Psalm 89 at the close of book 3. Uh, these authors were a part of David's worship team. And they write in order to encourage the people of God to worship God. Dear friends, you see, as you worship God, you come, you bring to Him all your worries. And in return, the Lord gives you His wisdom as you meditate upon His Word, as you bring and cast your burdens upon Him, you will see how the Lord is able to help you, to strengthen you, and to keep you. And so, as, you, as we moved to Book 4, you would be able to see that Book 4 would begin with the author of Moses. So, Ethan, one author, book, end of Book 4, end of Book 3, and Book 4, you would see Moses writing as the author of the only book as he begins book 4 and how uh, worship was established or re-established in Israel amidst her backsliding. So what is the message? The message is that there is always a way back with God, you see. We may be wandering away from Him, but do not be despondent that there is always a way back, that the people of God ought to always come back to the Lord, ought to always come back to His house, ought to always come back to His people, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Lord will certainly receive us. And so amidst the backsliding you see in Book 4, the emphasis there is that the people of God who would abide with him, would be blessed with his abiding presence and protection. And then in Psalm 92, you would see, some, that's Psalm 91, and then in Psalm 92, it's a psalm and song for the Sabbath day. We mentioned last Lord's Day how important it is that the people of God would make sure that the Sabbath day is holy. We would not come to church only on certain weeks of the month, but every week to appear before God because that's how we are made. We need that time with God. We live in hurrying, in bustling times where the excitement of daily business, where we are constantly engaged in perpetual movements and this entails great peril and dangers to our souls. The neglect of the habit of coming to God's house to worship Him, the habit of withdrawing from the world, from worldly business, 
from, so that it has caused many to backslide, many to move away from God and from the cause of Christ. And we realize that there is a need that we would set ourselves apart for solitary self-examination, for meditation on the things of God, how important it is. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you would see in his ministry how he would depart and he would went into a desert place and there he would pray and there he would be alone with God. The meeting of God's people with the Lord in worship is critical to the spiritual life of God's people. And so as we were looking in book 4, you would see how the Lord tells us and focuses for Israel to, to, to come before Him in worship. And so from Psalm 95 all the way to Psalm 100 is the call to worship. It is the way to spiritual health and strength that the people of God ought to be worshipping Him. And as you pass the hundred psalm, you come to Psalm 101, you would see the call to faithfulness for the remnant in Israel. That there is a departure. There are those who have been walking with God and are no longer walking. Well, what has happened? Well, the light of God's house does not stop shining. In fact, the people of God must be jotted to remember what God had done for them. And so Psalm 103 is written so that the people of God will not forget His benefits and to expand the thought that all creation would come to bless the Lord for He is their merciful creator and sustainer. For, help, for us to understand that indeed it is the Lord, it is the Lord that is sustaining His people. And Psalm 105 will bring us to a description of the faithfulness of God from Abraham to Moses throughout the lives of God's people, how God has been their shield and their protection. Give, book 4 gives, gives the backslidings of Israel, highlighted in uh, the introduction or at the close of uh, the book 4 in Psalm 106, verse 34 to 47, leading to their exile in Babylon for the southern kingdom and the destruction of the northern kingdom by the Assyrians. So this is the background for the first four books that they have been following the Lord. The Lord is saying to them, come and worship Him, come and worship Him. That is the focus for the people of God, to worship Him. Let us not neglect the discipline of meeting with our God, of fellowshipping with Him, of communing with Him. And the psalmist describes for us how we can do so. He describes for us the inner workings of our communion with God. So as you read the psalms, you will be able to learn precious lessons. And then in book 5, you would open in Psalm 107, in the, with the gathering of the dispersed of Israel. They were dispersed as a result of their sin. We were describing last week how they missed to observe the seventh year. For 70 times they missed, and that is why they were dispersed and carried away to Babylon from, their pro from the promised land for 17, 70 long years. And uh, as we read, as you have read Psalm 137, we would have understood 
the captive's sorrow, the captive's silence, and the captive's supplication. For 70 years in Babylon were soul-searching years. They were banished as a nation from their God to worship idols, so that everywhere when they turn their eyes, it's idols and idols and idols everywhere. And they were vexed because they have taken for granted the purity of worship in Israel. God's repeated plea were not heeded. And finally, God acted to send chastisement upon His people. The book of Hebrews says, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, not sons. And as you read through the Psalms, you would see God did not forget Israel. Even in the season of banishment, God would bring them back to their homeland again. And Psalm 137, which we have read, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion, their home in Israel, how they were banished. We hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. The harps were instruments of joy and rejoicing. Here in their captivity, the captives could not bring themselves to praise due to the sadness of their heart. When we are departed from God, joy also leaves our heart, dear friends. When we would not take seriously the worship of God, dear friends, and you would see the captive's silence. Better be dumb than be forced to please an enemy with a forced song, forced to sing, and with a mocking audience. How sad it was for Israel to be away from the land and as they cry out to the Lord, the Lord would bring them back to the land again. Psalm 107 verse 1 to 3 gives us that background. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. And what was the reason for their dispersal is given in Psalm 107 verse 11 to 12 because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. And when the Lord chastised them, they began to cry to Him. And by their contrition of heart, they were restored. Psalm 107 verse 13 to 15. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands asunder. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Dear friends, there is always a way back with God. No matter what our circumstances may be, there is always a way back for him. 
And the people of God must not be discouraged that whatever, how far we may drift from the Lord, we can pick ourselves up and that we can come to the Lord again and He will receive us. So in Psalm 37, uh, 107, verse 33 to 37, there was a reversal when God's people come back to Him. Verse 33 of Psalm 107, He turneth rivers into a wilderness and water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell and they may prepare a city for visitation and sow the fields and plant vineyards which may yield the fruits of increase. What was the teaching point as we begin the fifth book? It is this, dear friends, in verse 43 of Psalm 107. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. That God is good and God loves us with an everlasting and unfailing love and God is kind toward us and that we can always come back to Him that there is no matter too difficult, too hard for him, that he cannot solve, that he cannot help us. And so as you see that that, uh, reversal, then you would see uh, the arrangement of three of David's sum coming together, bringing comfort and solace to the tried and to the slandered, to trust in him for vindication, Psalm 108 to Psalm 110. The common theme of single-hearted devotion of the psalmist in praising the Lord. When we come back to God, when the Lord strengthens us, how blessed is the people of God. Psalm 108 verse 1 says, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Praise ye the Lord, Psalm 111, verse 1. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation, Psalm 112, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. There is a a strengthening in the hearts of his God's people when they come back to him. And they come back with renewed strength to fix their trust, to fix their hope in God. Why so? Psalm 113, verse 7 to 9 says, He raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifted up the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh a barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. And so here you see a description of the Lord leading His people with a description of the Exodus, that God indeed leads His people, how they have, He has brought them into the promised land and how they have been banished from the promised land and how He will bring them back again. And from 115 to 116, you will see a renewal of faith in the people of God, when they put away the false gods, when they acknowledge the false gods, when they would come to God, that they would seek the Lord, and then you would see the thanksgiving for answered prayer. I love the Lord because He has heard my voice and my supplication, because He has inclined His ear unto me, Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. So when the sinner comes back to God again, how the Lord restored him, how he is able to see those wasted years. I don't want to, don't want to remember, or I remember those years, that those were lessons for me, and I don't want to repeat those wasted time again. And as you close Psalm 100 and 
16, you would see the people of God in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of Jerusalem. They have returned to the land again. And then it's interesting, there are, there are two psalms that are recorded there. Psalm 117, which is the shortest psalm. It's a call and invitation for the people of God and the nations of the world to worship Him. And that's in our call to worship. The shortest psalm, only two verses. And then it, there, uh, just 119, would be the longest psalm. 119, uh, 176 verses. 117 is a grateful acknowledgement that the invisible God is their God and that He is merciful, He is kind towards them and His truth endureth forever. And then there were, in Psalm 118, in between Psalm 118 to 119, you will be able to see the triumphant of faith in the Lord. When we come to God, we will come to Christ. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. And so how does the people of God, having come back from, from their wandering, would be saved and would prosper in their soul again? It is by taking time to dwell with the Word of God. That is why in Psalm, as they come back to God, you see a very long Psalm extolling the Word of God in Psalm 119, an expansion of Psalm 1. When, when the psalmist begin the Psalm in Psalm 1, you remember the Lord says, depart from evil company and then take time to dwell in the Word of God and then you would, your spiritual life would prosper Take time to dwell in the Word of God. And this is expanded in Psalm 19, verse 7 to 9. The Word of God is the believer's indispensable sanctifying agent for renewal and rejuvenation. And the way it was placed in Psalm 119 is that it is an acrostic psalm. It is written according to the 22 Hebrew alphabets so that each of the, of the eight, uh, 22 section of eight verses will have each of the eight verses beginning with the same letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Why did the, the psalmist write like that? In order to help us to remember, is to jot our memory for memorization so that we would remember the Word of God and its veracity. What did the psalmist say in Psalm 119, verse 18? Uh, will you turn there? Psalm 119, verse 18. Shall we read together? When we come to the Lord, how can we be strengthened in our walk with God? When we would come to His Word. Verse 18 of Psalm 119, let's read together. Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The psalmist seeks that God would open his eyes to see and to behold the wonders of God's word, to understand his word that on our own we cannot but only when we seek the Lord, only when we ask the Spirit of God to open our eyes, only when we will be quiet before God, that we would have take away all the distractions, then our spiritual life can find bearing, that our spiritual life can take root and grow when we would take time to dwell in the Word of God. So when we take time to dwell in the Word of God, you would see the psalmist tells us that those who have, I would have strayed as like a lost sheep. Lord, seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. So that was the end of Psalm 119. 
in verse 176, that we are prone to stray. And how can we not stray? Well, then begins the song of degrees from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134. Fifteen psalms. Psalms that were written depicting the preparation of the Israelites ascending to the house of God in Jerusalem for worship in the annual feast of the Jews. That they would gather themselves together just as we gather for ourselves for church camp, we gather ourselves for conference. Do you have that excitement to gather together, to meet with God in His Word? and to gather the family together, and all would come together to meet with God, to fellowship together, to take time to study His Word. Well, some, uh, the Song of Degrees were written for that purpose, that the people of God would prepare themselves as they bring their families along, as they walk in the 2,000 feet ascent to the temple in Jerusalem, ah, they would have all their troubles in their heart. Ah, so many things that still cannot be resolved. What to do? Well, that's where the psalmist tells us, I will look unto the hills, from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which maketh heaven and earth. How wonderful it is when we make our way to God. Israel coming back to the land, coming back to God and taking time. You would see how the Lord uh, uh, establishes His people. And so they would pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalm 122. And they would wait upon the Lord for His mercy, that God is on their side and strength in trusting the Lord. They that trust the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abideth forever. And Psalm 126, sow in tears and reap in joy. Psalm 127, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Psalm 128, the blessing of the God-fearer. Psalm 129, the persecuted, the plea of the persecuted. Psalm 130, which we shall sing in our closing hymn, Let Israel hope in the Lord. Let Israel hope in the Lord. To be quiet before the Lord. To trust in David's God, Psalm 132. To enjoy the beauty of unity, of the unity of the brethren, Psalm 133. And standing in the Lord's sanctuary by night, when they have arrived there, they would be there, you know, when we go for our camp, we will not be just going and returning, but we would try to all gather and stay together for three days, for four days together to enjoy the company. For the Lord has done great things for us, Psalm 135, that His mercy endures as they remember their tears in exile and God's answered prayer and how they come back to God, and the Lord seeks that they would search their hearts daily. And that's what we were doing when we partake of the Lord's Supper, when take time to search our life, to consider our life before God. Search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me and know my thoughts, and see if there are any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting." And from Psalm 140 to 150, you would see the Psalter closing in strength. Half of the Psalms would be written by David from 141 to 145. With David's cry for help in a cave, verse 100 and Psalm 142, his prayer to do the Lord's will, Psalm 143. And happy is the people whose God is the Lord, Psalm 144. And David's psalm of praise, that's the close, Psalm 145. 46, to put not your trust in princes, and God heals the broken hearted, Psalm 147. Praise ye the Lord, for he, it is good 
to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. So you see the culmination of the Psalter with the culmination that all creation praises the Lord, Psalm 148, and the Lord takes pleasure in His people, that we are the most precious of all of God's creation, His people. Should we not worship Him? We must be the first to worship Him. And finally, praise ye the Lord, Psalm 150. Therein is the Psalter, the 150 Psalms, we must take time to study and we must take time to appreciate, take time to worship God, that our spiritual life may thrive, that our spiritual life may indeed grow. Amen.